Hello, welcome to this introduction to multivariable functions. We're going to look at uh, what is a multivariable function, what is it used for, and um, how can we use technology to get the graphs of these, and what can we gain by looking at the graphs. Not something that you would ever have to draw by hand. So uh, here's a real life example of a multivariable function. Um, this being summertime, I have uh, changed my normal. Um, Cut that out. Okay. Here's a real life example of a multivariable function. The heat index. When you look at the news and the, the weather, and they say, you know, the the heat index is 110 degrees. Like, what does that mean? It's taking two input variables and coming up with an output variable. Uh, input variable number one is temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Input variable number two is the relative humidity. Uh, they enter it in as a percentage. This is the uh, National Weather Service and um, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Okay. Um, and yeah, what they do is like, you know, what happens in real life is that you, you think there's two input values that they give you an output value and you want to be able to have a function that, w that you can plug in these two values and have it spit out your output value. In real life, what you do is you get a bunch of data and you perform a regression. And so here is the actual function with a quadratic regression up to quadratic terms. Although the, the last term there is, you know, a quadratic times a quadratic, but but yeah, you give me a, you give me a temperature, you give me a relative humidity, plug into that formula. This is from um, I got this from Wikipedia. I didn't make it up. I rounded. Uh, but we have exactly uh, the formula that will spit out the temperature that it feels like. So if it's 94 degrees out, but there's 65% humidity, this chart here then tells you that the output should be 114 degrees. It raises the temperature by what feels like 10 degrees. And, um, and then this chart is what they, what they put out to let you know about when you should have caution. In yellow, you should have caution, but in... In gold, you should have extreme caution. In the orange, you should have you're in danger, and in the red, you're in extreme danger. And so, input variables, output variables. Think of these different numbers as different different heights off the xy plane for our multivariable function. Okay, all right, great. Uh, here's a multivariable function. Z is equal to the square root of xy. We want to be able to Whenever you're given any function, when you first learn functions, the first thing you thought about was, well, what's the domain? Well, here, let's do it now. In multivariable, what is the domain? So the things you need to worry about when thinking about domain is the square root of a negative number. You can't have that. Um, dividing by zero, can't have that. Uh, later on, we'll learn, like basically, like natural log can't have a negative number there either. You can't even have zero there. Um, for this one, though, we can have it equal to zero. The square root of zero is zero. Um, but we can't have the product of x and y being negative. x and y, the product of them, must be positive. What does that mean? So when you're doing domain, now we'll be shading a region in the xy plane where your function exists, and then the height off the xy plane is the z value so x and y must have the same sign that means you're in the first quadrant where x and y are both positive or you're in the third quadrant where x and y are both negative and so this function only exists for these x values and y values in these regions in the xy plane you can't have anything from the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant it would cause the square root to be negative. Well, it was caused what's underneath the square root to be negative. And here's the, uh, and what I'm using here is just uh, common free tools on the internet. Uh, the 2D graph, anytime you want to graph something in 2D, the, um, the tool to use is Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S. Anytime you want to graph something in 3D, the tool to use is GeoGebra, geometry and algebra fused together, GeoGebra. I think they're both from the same company and they work really well and they're free. Um, so check them out. It helps you draw these things that you 
that when, when I learned it, I had to draw these things by hand. It was absolutely ridiculous. But no, for you, there's these tools online. Take advantage of them. Uh, here's a similar question about finding and sketching the domain. And square root involved as well. You want that guy who's underneath the square root to be greater than or equal to zero. This time, though, it's a little more complicated. I need to find out what this a, a formula for the equals to, and then I need to worry about shading. Uh, normally, we do y equals, you know, some f of x, but this one seems to have a better way of looking at it, having x equals some formula on y. We can move the y squared over and move the 1 over and have x being equal to y squared minus 1, and we want to shade all x's that are greater than that. So x's that are greater than some curve would be all the x's to the right of that. Um, x equals y squared minus 1 is a parabola on its side shifted one unit towards the, uh, towards the negative x's. I mean, when, when x is 1, this guy should be 0. When x, I'm sorry, when x is negative 1, this guy should be 0. And so y, the y value should be 0. So that's what the formula looks like. And then we would shade all x's that are larger than that. Here's the three-dimensional. Uh, there seems to be a slight problem with GeoGebra on this one. There's patches here. I don't know why those patches are there. But anyway, okay? So find the domain of a multivariable function. All right, great. And then just graphing multivariable functions. Here's some, <coughs> some interesting multivariable functions. We have uh, sine of x plus sine of y. Looks almost like an eggshell where you have uh, periodic in x and periodic in y. Uh, here's another one. 2x squared plus 10y squared, all of that times e to the negative x squared plus minus y squared. A better way to think about that is this parenthesis is divided by e to the x squared plus y squared. And so what we have then is uh, the following 3D graph. And what we'll be looking at in the coming days is, well, how do I find those peaks? There's a valley down at the origin. How do I know that? And what's, what's, the, uh, what's the x and y? values that give me those those peak um, those local or in this case absolute maximum values we'll be we'll be trying to redo all of first semester calculus now with a second variable um, with multivariable you'll be looking at um, something that's very important to you will be a level curve so you have a plane parallel to the XY plane and you want to find out where it intersects your surface at Here's a nice animation for this particular function. So it's the sine of x squared plus y squared, but that's underneath a radical. And so here's the, uh, the multivariable 3D, um, the, the, the surface there. It's, it, it has this periodicity, but it happens along circles. And um, so on the right is the three-dimensional graph. On the left is the two-dimensional level curve graph. And so as the blue plane moves up and down, it'll populate the graph that's on the left with the level curve. In this particular function, the level curves happen to be actual surfaces. If you set z equal to a constant, what you'll have will be a circle. So it should play now. Okay, there we go. The blue. Oh, that's great. Those red that are there already, the red circles, those are the... Um, the circles for the maximums, and then these are the other values here. It's concentric circles. Pretty cool animation I found online. Um, application is you can just plug in the different functions and, and it'll do this for it. Um, if you have a, a plot basically that has a bunch of different level curves in the XY plane representing different altitudes for that, for that blue plane that was moving up and down, that's called a contour plot. So here's a function z equals 4x squared plus y squared. It's a paraboloid. It's a, it's, a, it's a bowl shape. And if you slice at different altitudes, you'll get an ellipse. If you let z be equal to a constant, what you'll be seeing is an ellipse. And so um, this graph on the left here then is the different altitudes. The green are the lower altitudes and the red are the higher altitudes. Different z values. We're going to find out something special about these level curves and contour plots. Why do we care about contour plots? Well, in real life, if you're looking at a, a topographical map, then um, if you see the different contours 
this could be a way of taking a three-dimensional mountain and put representing it in two dimensional two dimensions and there's some some interesting information that you can gather from this um, I have two points marked off a and B and these altitudes represent these these level curves represent the altitude uh, in this case in real life it'll be the um, elevation above sea level and so point a is at a place where you have really tightly packed level curves but point b is at a place where the level curves are separated from each other and what do we gather from that if each different level curve represents a different altitude and i have many different level curves represented nearby my point that means my altitude is changing rapidly so point a is at a place on the mountain where the level curves are tightly packed this indicates in a rapid change in altitude that's like a cliff but point B that's not the case at point B what we have is just a kind of a flat like a plateau the level curves are, are separated so you can represent represent that by saying that it sort of represents a, a place where the mountain is relatively flat okay and then we can use level curves for other things as well this here is a, is a weather map and these different these different contours these different lines these, these represent um, places where you have uh, atmospheric pressure being the same so so um, there should be some colors in here as well but when you see a weather map and you see this action going on especially when they're tightly packed like that this represents uh, so atmospheric pressure is measured in milli millibars and, and so these different contours represent um, the same millibar and so it's called isobars and w the wind will be moving the strongest where they're tightly packed at okay all right so that's enough about the intro to multivariable calculus next video we'll look at it just uh introduction to multivariable limits and then we'll get into the heart of the matter multivariable derivatives and the chain rule thank you for watching sorry i went over the 10 minutes but um i just wanted to finish that whole set of um uh, slides up at one time uh, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. I am uh, here to help you through this. Um, please comment down below, like and subscribe. Reach out to me if you have any questions, and I'll be glad to help. Uh, I will see you in the next video.